While many of his classmates were joining students across the country in walking out of class today, my next guest was here in Washington lobbying lawmakers to help pass that school safety bill that Claudia was just reporting on. Kyle Kashuv is a junior at Marjorie Stoneham Douglas High School and a survivor of that tragic shooting that occurred nearly one month ago in Parkland, Florida, and he joins me right here now. Kyle, first of all, thank you for being here. And thank you, you were in an adjacent, adjacent building yeah. um, from where the carnage took place. How are you doing one month later, first of all? I mean, I'm doing okay just by the fact that I realize that I have to make I'm, I'm taking the time to make a positive change, and I'm, I'm, I'm going through and reliving the experience by talking to senators. But are you struggling? Are you having nightmares? Uh, you told me you you slept three three hours last night because you wanted to get on Capitol Hill. You're you're living on Dr Pepper and Mo and Monster Energy drinks right yeah. now. I hope I'm not revealing something to your parents. I shouldn't have. But in all seriousness, how are you doing personally beyond the lobby? Well, I'm very tired, but I realize the importance of what I'm doing, and that's why I'm doing it, and that's why I'm taking like. That's why I'm willing to take the time and, and put myself through like such little amount of sleep in order to make sure that the gun control, um, no, no, the Stop School Act gets passed. So you mentioned gun control. A lot of your fellow students are pushing for gun control. Mm -hmm. You don't believe that's the answer. Why? Well, because right now, look, we have to focus on what we can achieve, and the Stop School Violence Act is what we can achieve, something the left and the right both agree on, because the second we have a gun control debate, nothing's going to happen, Republicans won't budge. So let's focus on something that can immediately happen, because right now, lives are still at stake. One of your classmates, David Hogg, uh, had a much different approach to this issue and a much different approach to his conversation with the president. Roll that. I actually hung up on the White House the other day. They actually called me the day before the listening session and asked if we were going to come, and I said... I'm not coming because we expect President Trump to come to the CNN town hall, which he never declined the invitation from. I ended on this message with them. I said, President Trump, we don't need to listen to President Trump. President Trump needs to listen to the screams of the children and the screams of this nation. You actually went into the Oval Office with First Lady Melania Trump mm -hmm. as well as with President Trump. Did you, how did you find him compared to the media caricature of him? He's very different than he's represented in the media. He's very warm and outgoing, and um, that's not represented in the media at all. He's, he's somewhat represented as a distant figure, and that's not true. So um, if you don't believe gun control is the answer, you su were supportive of this House bill, yeah. but surely you don't believe that the $50 billion is enough, right? It's going to help train teachers. It, it might provide some metal detectors, but to deal with this nationwide crisis, more well, has to be done. If not gun control, what, what are you supportive of? It's $50 million, $50 million I'm sorry. every year for 10 years. Yeah. Um, and I think that some, okay, the thing is that gun control, the issue with Parkland, what happened was the issue wasn't gun control. The issue was the Broward Sheriff's Office and the FBI failed on so many different levels. Mm -hmm. And we have to find a way to solve this problem because when we, when we represent guns as the issue, well, they're not the issue, that's counterproductive to the discussion. So what the act does is it, re it registers that we have an issue, we have societal issues at our school, and we have to be able to, re to um, find kids who are mentally unstable before they act out. Mm -hmm. And this has already been working very, very effectively in Utah. And, and as a last thing, it deals with mental health, this legislation, but also quickly the issue of arming teachers. You're 16 years old. What do you think of that? Um, the act does not register. I know this doesn't, but what do you think of it? But well, like I said this before, I think that the issue with arming teachers is very, it's very simple. We don't have the funding for actual education. And that it's simply, it's a, it's a, it's a medium solution between getting armed guards mm -hmm. and, and not doing anything. We have to be able to protect our schools. And we can't have, have gun-free zones anymore at schools. It's simply illogical. And um, if there's a 15-minute response time in some counties in Florida for the sheriffs, for, for the police, mm -hmm. there's 15 minutes of an unarmed school. And the first responders are the most important. And what the Marshall Program does, which is it allows teachers and um, staff to have um, guns at school, mm -hmm. it allows them to be those first responders. It simply gives yeah. them the opportunity. You and so many others uh, at that school went through so much. We feel your pain, and we appreciate you being here tonight. So well-spoken, and I hope you get some sleep. Thank you. Thanks.